Okay, so we uh, just talked about basic bonding a little bit, but let's kind of um, bring electrons and orbitals really into our discussion. So we're going to be talking about valence bond theory and Vesper, right? So valence bond theory and valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or the Vesper model, are really simple, effective models for understanding bonding that occurs in organic compounds, right? Covalent bonds occur in two atoms when the orbitals are overlapping with each other, okay? So if we look at two hydrogen atoms, we have a hydrogen atom here that has one electron in a 1s orbital. Another hydrogen has one electron in a 1s orbital. So these hydrogens can combine to form a bond here. This hydrogen 2 molecule is stable because the electrons are um, bonded between them. And then we can draw our structure here. We have an HH bond, all right? So that's a very simple example where we're forming a bond between two S orbitals. Obviously, we're gonna have a lot more complex examples. So let's talk about carbon. And what we really need to do is start talking about its electron configuration, all right? So this is a concept from general chemistry. So if you look at the electron configuration of carbon, it's 1s2, two electrons in the s orbital, 2s2, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and then there's two electrons in the p orbitals, okay? But we don't actually need the full electron configuration. We just need to know how many valence electrons we have, right? That's really the key here. So let's go take a look at our periodic table to really understand about valence electrons, all right? So here's our periodic table, okay? There's a new numbering system of our columns where they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 18. The older system had 1a, 2a. These were all 3, right? Um, those were all 3b, 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, and 8a. And those are actually the numbers that we're going to be looking at because that tells you exactly how many valence electrons you have. So anything in this column has one valence electron. Anything in here has two. In the middle here, we have all of our transition metals. And guess what? We don't really need to use those in organic chemistry. So we don't have to worry about those too much, which is great. We jump over to what's now called column 13. That has three valence electrons. Next is four, five, six, seven, and then noble gases have eight, right? And the noble gases have full, um, full shells, so they don't really bond. Right, so when we're really talking about what atoms we have to focus on, it's going to be hydrogen, right? Occasionally boron and aluminum, carbon most definitely, right? And then nitrogen, oxygen, all of our halogens, right? And we might occasionally talk about silicon or phosphorus or sulfur, but they match everything above it, oxygen, phosphorus, Sulfur matches oxygen, phosphorus matches nitrogen. So the first thing we have to do is we don't really have to worry about the electron configuration, right? We just need to worry about how many um, valence electrons everything has. So hydrogen has one. Boron, aluminum will have three valence electrons. Carbon will have four. Nitrogen will have five, oxygen will have six, fluorine and all of the halogens will have seven valence electrons. And that's going to be really important when we're counting electrons and thinking about bonds and structures that things can have. All right. So the first thing is being able to understand and determine how many valence electrons your atom will have. All right. And we do that from the periodic table. Okay. Carbon is normally going to form four covalent bonds, right? It'll form four valence because it has four valence electrons, all right? 
What's interesting about this is electron configuration is not really good to talk about how bonds are made because these orbitals are going to hybridize. Okay, these orbitals are going to hybridize. And in our next video, we're going to be talking about hybridization.